Venice is stunning. It's probably why so many great movies have been set here. Okay, it's mainly Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and Casino Royale. But that got me thinking about that latter movie because in it, James Bond shoots essentially a gigantic bag of air which makes a building seemingly floating collapse and sink into the Grand Canal. Is there any real science going on there? First up, let's work out what sort of building we're dealing with. Now, to create the effect, they built a one-third scale model of the whole thing. That was a giant tank of water, a big rig to control what was going on, and then, obviously, the building itself, which was 16 feet tall. That means that what we're dealing with is a 48-foot building in Venice, and from the proportions, that means it's about 36 feet wide and from the inside we see it's approximately square. Now, before any of you say in the comments, no, I am not a hater, I am going to tackle this in the kindest possible way that physics will allow me. So when we're talking about what this thing is made of, obviously yes, bricks and mortar, but I'm going to go with the lightest density quoted for masonry, 1,800 kilograms per meter cubed. I'm also going to assume fairly thin walls, only eight inches thick, and absolutely nothing on the inside. That means this building weighs up at 280 tonnes. So you need to realise that Venice as a city is, is not floating. It's built on wooden stilts that were piled into the mud hundreds of years ago. Now, it served it well up to now, but with hindsight, that perhaps wasn't the best idea since the city actually is slowly sinking. Uh, depending on which part you're in, that could be two to four millimeters per year. And that is true sinking into the mud, not just the water levels rising. But it does mean that we do have some sort of reaction force, some sort of support for these buildings, though it may not be entirely sufficient for the one that James Bond was in. What are the forces involved for our building? Well, the only downward one is the weight of the building itself. It's mass times by Earth's gravitational acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared. As we just mentioned, also upwards is the reaction force, something that we don't particularly know just yet, but there's also another force, the buoyancy force. And that comes from Archimedes' principle. He said that the upward force is equal to the weight of the water that has been displaced by the object that you put inside that fluid. Let's say our building has sunk by some distance x. The expression for our buoyancy force is therefore equal to this, where we have the density of water, the volume displaced, and again, g. So you can see that as the building starts to sink, the rate that it actually sinks at slows down. We still don't know how big the reaction force is though. And again, because I'm being kind, I'm gonna set it to the maximum possible value it can be with the building still ending up sinking without those flotation devices. Now you might think the way to do that is to work out the equilibrium point where the force is equal zero and if that's equal to the height of the building then that's the maximum it can be because once it's gone below that point it's fate is sealed it is sinking but that's not quite true because the equations of motion are the equations of a simple harmonic oscillator meaning that when those flotation devices are burst it will go to the equilibrium point but then keep on going it's still got velocity it won't settle down and it will bob up and down with a period of 11 seconds if it doesn't end up sinking. So really, rather than taking three minutes as depicted in the film, it's got to sink in five and a half seconds. This is the equation of the palastro's motion before it's fully submerged when the equations for the forces change slightly and it's going down. The simple harmonic motion introduces a maximum factor of two. And that means that our reaction force, in the nicest possible way, has to account for 77% of the building's weight. 
Now, if our flotation devices are making that building stable completely, so it's not bobbing up and down by some horrible amount and making people feel seasick, that means that they would need to be 66 meters cubed and fully submerged. That's the size of two shipping containers underneath the building, which is not what we saw in the film. So the scenario depicted in Casino Royale is in fact plausible as long as we make those flotation devices way bigger and the whole thing happens incredibly quickly. I mean, so quickly in fact that James Bond would probably be dead and Daniel Craig would no longer be James Bond, which would have meant no Quantum of Solace and Tom Hiddleston even sooner, probably. It's not a bad thing actually. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Well done. You're probably only like 50% of all the views down there that have done so, so I really appreciate that. Um, do remember you can like and subscribe and share and all those usual YouTube things and I will be back soon, no doubt.